<laughs> and uh, without further ado, we'll move to uh, to the next uh, to the next topic of this uh, first meeting, which is uh, which is a roundtable dedicated to uh, some of the many questions you have raised. And so I will pass the floor immediately to Jose. Okay. So yes, we are happy to to start this roundtable. And, and the purpose of, of this roundtable is to discuss how to shape the group. Uh, and it is it is a pleasure for us to host a, a part, as participants of this roundtable. Uh, so Philly Wells, who is a co-founder of NFCore and currently works at Sequera. Sven Nassen couldn't join, so but he's uh he has he has also been involved in the NFCore just in case he stepped in. Uh uh, he has been involved in the NFCore creation. Uh, he is uh, from Kubik in Tübingen. His research is more focused on human genomics, but he has also been involved in, in this group before, as many of you know. Uh, also, Sara Jevali, who is cor currently an intern researcher working in IRS IRSD, and Sylvain Fosek from INRA in Toulouse, who were, both of them were highly involved uh, in Genius Switch project in, in Eurofan. And of course, Krista, uh, our speaker, who has been already nicely introduced by Sadiq and was the coordinator of the WordPress project. And, and as the roundtable will be about how to shape the special interest group, first I will let Phil introduce what this idea of the NFCore special interest groups is. Uh, so then, the, so yes, Phil, the stage is yours. Please. Thanks very much. I won't take up much of your time. Um, I'll just uh, quickly kind of firstly say thank you to all of you for being part of NFCore um being involved um and thank you christopher fantastic talk it's like like all these things it's it's amazing to hear about the impact that um that the community has and, and and kind of hear back from from people in the community about how the pipelines are being used and how it's affecting the way that people work so uh really appreciate that thank you very much and, and it's great to have you all, all here um we're meeting because of this kind of new NFCore concept called special interest groups. Um, I just kind of wanted to point to a couple of resources about them. Um, I put out a blog post just the other day. So this is kind of the main place to go to right now for any details. You go to community and blog, and then you'll see there's one called special interest groups. Um, and kind of set out the stage for, for what we're doing and why. Um, and um, a little section about, about you all at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> um, and kind of as a, at an overview level, the, the idea behind this was that um, we, until now, have really been focused on, on as you said, Krista, um, kind of focused on developers largely within the community, kind of bringing developers together to build pipelines and trying to um, really help people to collaborate and, and share ideas and, and development practices. And because of that, the structure of the community has been focused on on the pipelines themselves and to some extent the tooling. Um, but what we're starting to see more has been quite a lot of work with with different kind of external communities and consortia, um, the tightest integration being with with Bovreg and, and Eurofang. And, and what it's really interesting there is that we're having groups of, of people with common interests, but they're not focused on a single pipeline. They're kind of working across a set of pipelines, but in a specific manner. Um, and so this kind of perpendicular action uh, is is the kind of founding idea of special interest groups that we can we can help people to collaborate not just for multiple institutions on a single analysis type but also across uh, specific analysis fields um, and by bringing people across from all over the world all working on similar ideas we can hopefully um, kind of come up with and collaborate on standardization not just of the pipeline code but the way that specific pipelines are run and the way that specific data is handled um so that that's it really i'm I'm gonna kind of if you're interested in in more i encourage having a read through this blog post it kind of explains a little bit about the mechanics that we've decided on uh, within the nf core kind of governance about how special interest groups will function um you can find yourselves and and any future interest groups under this kind of dedicated page so we really hope that this will kind of expand over time um, and that all of you will, will help contribute to these pages um, like any other page on the NFCore website, if you just click this edit button top right, it takes you straight to GitHub and it's just markdown files. So you can kind of submit a pull request and edit and add to these pages as you see fit. So um, 
And most of all, we, I want to hear from you all about what you need and what would be useful um, for you as, as end users and, and members of the community, because this is new. We, we've never done this before. Um, we are we just want to be as useful as possible for the people in the community. And so we're very much kind of on the listening end rather than the dictating end of this whole process. OK. With that happy Thanks, to... Fields, for, uh, yes, I have to maybe unpick you, I think. OK. Uh, yes, thanks, Phil. Uh, uh, where are you? OK, sorry. <laughs> I have to. Uh, yes. OK, you are not spotted anymore. OK, so thanks for the nice introduction to the special interest groups. And to make the discussion a little bit more agile, we have prepared some topics to discuss. But maybe as also uh, Krista had this uh, nice slide with some questions, maybe we can start with one of these questions, these somehow provocative questions about uh, how we see this equilibrium between the progress and of, of Nextflow and NFCore and the standardization and reproducibility. So do you think that this could be an issue at some point? And this question maybe it's for you, Phil, or, or Cedric to, to answer. How do you see you this? This equilibrium or this. I'd love to. I'd love to take a crack at this. <laughs> I, I thought about asking a question, but I thought as we we're going to be doing a round table, I'd save it. <laughs> um, yeah, this this question of kind of standardization and and um, and doing like the final mile is how I often think about it. You, you kind of hear about this with with um, public transport and stuff. You know, you get dumped by a train in in the city centre, but how do you get everybody out to the final little destinations where it's different for everyone? We have the same problem at NFCore. We want everybody to collaborate and we want everyone to standardize. Uh, but in order to do that, we have to make the pipelines generic to some extent. And that always leaves most people with the final mile of analysis where you need to do that thing to your data, which is specific to your project, to your exact data type. And how do we deal with that? Um, again, very open to suggestions here. I mean, at the moment, we basically tell everyone, okay, it's over to you now. We've We've helped you get this far. Um, it's up to you to do the last bit. Um, there's some work ongoing um, to try and streamline those that final manual work. Um, for example, um, on the secure side, back in um, at the end of last year at the Nextflow Summit, Evan announced a new feature we're launching within platform called um, uh, Data Studios, which will be basically a way to launch interactive workspaces on the same compute location that you run your data. And I hope that we can sort of tie these two features together in the future. So when your pipeline finishes, the pipeline developers will be able to set up um, kind of custom analysis um, setup. So you can kind of, okay, jump straight into this data visualization tool or this exploration tool or um, this Jupyter notebook or whatever. So there's some things we can do like that with the tooling. Um, another thing that I think we can do to try and address it is um, attack this idea of kind of chaining pipelines or, or meta pipelines. Um, as you mentioned, Krista, with the advent of DSL2 in, in Nextflow, we've we've kind of adopted this notion of, of modules where we've gone from pipelines down. We've broken up all the modules into these tiny reproducible components, which we can share around between pipelines. And that's been very powerful. It, it still stops at the pipeline level. So something we've been discussing a bit recently is like, well, maybe we can kind of go in the other direction and, and treat an entire pipeline as a module effectively and either build a meta pipeline where you can kind of import multiple pipelines and just stick them together um, or improve the experience of being able to chain pipelines together maybe with or without Nextflow. Um, that, I think, if we can get it to work, will be a very powerful um, idea. Uh, and that's something we're working very hard on at the moment in the core Nextflow development team. Yeah. Uh, so. Yes, please, Ilvan. Yeah, it's contribute to the discussion. I think, yeah, it, it's a very, I, I like the idea of the last kilometer and you know, the need to reach the, so to get uh, the users to be involved in the, in the community. Uh, and from my point of view, there are two major bottlenecks and you already cited them. So the first is the technological, um, accessibility uh, issue. So of course, if you develop uh, like easier um, 
Uh, oh yeah, my yes, I automatically corrected with kilometers. Sorry. So uh, of course, if you um, uh, bridge the, this gap with uh, like a um, like a web based tool or some platform that is easier for people to try to play a bit. Uh, of course, the, the point is not to to develop a Galaxy web uh, interface, but this could be something to, to work on, I guess, for uh, NFCore and uh, uh, to help people get a sense of what it is to run something and get some results. Um, and then the second the second point, uh, apart from the accessibility and technical accessibility, would be the customization. And one one aspect is totally uh, addressed with um, what you uh, called the um, sorry modularity and uh, chaining pipelines and combining pipelines to adapt uh, the the tools to the the, the needs of the the scientists. But and and maybe there's another level of customization that is a, for me that is a key to make sure people can make it work on their uh, their experiments is the part of the the design file the, the experimental design file for instance where you um, where you assign to every um, file you assign the experimental factor. Uh, if it's, uh, you know, if for instance, it's a paired uh, experiment, if it's a time series experiment or stuff like this. And, and this is a key, uh, this is a key part of the analysis that is actually shared by many, uh, many workflows for, because we can, this is a, key, a central point for RNA-seq, ATAC-seq or whatever the omics you use. You always have uh, samples, and you have categories of samples. You might want to compare groups, and uh, and this is something that was not very, uh, uh, from my perception, that was not very obvious because it was not homogenized um, across uh, workflows and pipelines. So, and I know that there has been a lot of works, uh, a lot of work on on this, and I'm totally unaware of uh, what is going on. So. Um, yes, that could be something to, uh, to to share. Yeah, sample sample sheets are a very difficult topic. Um, one of my least favorite topics because <laughs> there is such a thorny issue. Um, we did quite a lot of discussion with um, a group in the US led by uh, Nathan Sheffield. He's the author of Ref Genie, which we originally started, and then he's also um, behind a project called um, PEP Portable Encapsulated Projects. And basically the idea of PEP is to create a standard for sample sheets um, along with like a server and, and schema and all this kind of stuff with the idea that um, different pipelines and different standards could, could adopt that, that standard. It never really went anywhere um, because we never quite got the degree of kind of adoption within NextFlow. Um, it's all, it was very Python based and we needed it to be groovy and I don't know, it was never quite happens, but some of the core ideas were pretty nice. Um, the kind of the way we have been pushing more, I guess, is about sample sheet validation. Um, and that's something I hope to see more of. So um, I'm not sure how visible this is, uh, but um, we've had more over the past two years, we've had more and more of this kind of uh, validation steps when you launch a, a given Nextflow pipeline that checks that your the parameters you've supplied are valid rather than failing halfway through the run because you, I don't know, used a string when it should have been a, a number. Um, and we're slowly pushing that in the direction of sample sheets now as well. So a pipeline developer can uh, write a schema defining what the sample sheet should look like. Um, and then the sample sheet contents itself can also be validated. Like it should have this column name, it should, and the values within that column should look like this. Um, the initial use of that, which is in which is coming in some pipelines now, is just to fail quickly if you got something wrong. But my hope has always been since like what, about 2020 when I started that project that one day it would lead to that would, that would form a foundation for creating a set of tooling to make it easier to create those files in the first place. Because now we have a file that says your sample sheet should have four columns. This one should be yes, no, et cetera. And, and we should be able to build tooling around all of that. And um, if you dig deep enough on NF Core Tools repository, you'll find a whole load of GitHub issues where I've sketched out how some of this tooling could look. Um, but we just need some developers to actually go and build it. <laughs> it 
Phil, if I can bounce on this, so one of one of one of our challenges now is that we are building increasingly complex pipelines, and they are not anymore linear. They have plenty of uh, uh, crossroads, and eventually, one way of using the pipeline is a valid path through this complex metro map. But many paths are topologically valid, but they don't necessarily make scientific sense. Or if they do, they need to be explored. And so uh, we are now with a challenge of uh, uh, having a, a, a pipeline that are as inclusive as possible, but also increasingly complex, where each set of parameters is effectively a pipeline. How do you see how is the future of these things in NFCore, or how do you think they should be handled? Yeah, and this comes a little bit back to the, the notion I mentioned earlier of meta pipelines and, and increasing pipelines. Yes. Capacity. You take pipelines like uh, the, the really big pipelines like Sarek, for example, and they're, they're beasts. You can just do so many different things in them. Um, and if we can unlock this ability to chain pipelines, part of that discussion is, okay, do we take the big pipelines and, and chop them up? <laughs> And so then we, yeah. then we have a pipeline for just doing variant calling. And if all you care about is variant calling, you don't have to worry about all that other stuff and it removes a lot uh, of that complexity. But we still can also have kind of these meta pipelines, which would look very much like the current Sarek, where you can run the whole way through from start to finish and do everything in one go. So okay. that's interesting. So th not, just to make sure I understood, you mean that pipeline should become linear again, taking advantage of the modularity? Exactly, but have a kind of a uh -huh. different levels of complexity and 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 have a uh -huh, bit, uh -huh. bit more specialization of, of the top level pipelines. Um, that's a a bit of a hand wavy answer because how you how you take that concept and actually make it into something concrete, which is not overwhelmingly confusing, is is not trivial. <laughs> but um, but I think there's something there. So if I if I if I can speak from my point of view, which is not everybody's point of view here, as a, as a method person, I like to explore combination of methods. So one of the reasons I like very big bulky pipelines is because suddenly you can run crazy loops and exploring all kinds of combinations. And these things are of a lot of interest to me because they allow me to explore the method space, but they are not very useful for end users because end users want one solution that, that works. And so it's an important and interesting tension, I think, that 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 that, that could be that could be explored. Uh, so when that, you also, if 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 I may, um, you reminded me while you're talking, Sylvan, of something I forgot to say in the earlier section about um, different ways we can um, do the the final mile and also the customization of the final results. Uh, not quite the same thing, but something I'm quite excited about specifically with special interest groups. And also, Cedric, this ties nicely into the concept of complex pipelines. Um, you take RNA-seq, you take Sarek or something, you can run it with the, the parameter space that you, <laughs> you love to explore is huge. Um, but actually, if you're doing animal genomics, maybe you don't, much of that parameter space is not relevant or you don't care about it. And so one idea which I would love to explore is the, um, the idea of collaborating on configuration of pipelines mm -hmm. so at the moment if you go to um kind of resources i'll quickly share my screen again uh, you go to resources and and shared configs we have already the idea of collaborating and sharing co configs but they're on a comp compute infrastructure level so i can kind of go through and say okay i'm working in sweden um here is a config to run on the shared academic cluster in sweden and i can just do minus profile at max uh, that we've had that since quite the early days of NFCore, and it's extremely powerful, especially for bringing in new users. But um, I would love to one see if we could do something similar. We say, okay, I'm working with bovine bovine genomic data with the RNA seq pipeline. Here's a configuration profile which has got sensible defaults, not for human, but for bovine data, or whatever you know. Um, and again, that's, that's kind of work there. That's collaboration and, and domain expertise. Uh, which is maybe a level of collaboration and, which we've not yet tapped into. I'd be really interested to see if we could do something now. And sort of zooming back onto the purpose of this roundtable, which is the future of this channel, the future focus of this channel. So do you think that establishing this set of common parameters is as important a goal of establishing common pipelines? Do you think it's it's one of it should be one of the purposes of the special interest group? 
I think the answer to that question lies with you all <laughs> because the, the special interest group is not for my benefits it's for your benefit but um but it's one idea that i think is interesting and 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 i would hope could be useful for you because during this discussion and and jose you're, you're in charge but i was wondering ah but chris Saska, i was just finishing if we could have a sort of a typical questions you know typical things you guys would want to ask on this channel and I proposed one, you know, typically I'm doing this kind of analysis. Is anybody doing the same kind of analysis? Which kind of tools are you using? That's one thing, but probably all of you have different takes on this. And Krista, you, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, I, I very much like this idea of having some tested, validated parameters for, I, I mentioned that the problem that increasingly this and of course, technology allows um, non-bioinformatician to have rather standardized, well-developed pipelines. And you mentioned that we have, in the nonlinear concept, you, you can glue together things which don't make a lot of sense or parameters which don't make a lot of sense. So for the different applications, I think it would be very beneficial from a user's point of view uh, to, to come up with these parameter definitions. And there, the, the, the core group, this animal genomics interest group could provide us very important service because here are the experts who would, who would be able to decide what does make sense and what doesn't. Even if it's just oh. one or two of them, if there's a really specialist and then could be briefly discussed in the group and this, this be published as a, as a group output for the community, it would be definitely uh, a strong, very strong point. And Phil, if I can ask, where, where will these parameters live? Because these sets of parameters, they, they beg for a house, no? Just like <laughs> the pipelines. Yeah, I mean, my, I would, I would uh, this is up for discussion, but we already have a GitHub repository called nfcore slash configs, um, which is where all the institutional pipeline config files live. So I could imagine us having new subdirectories under there and you could have an animal genomics directory and then have a config there for each different nfcore pipeline. And then we can also build that into the website and have a, a web page which kind of renders those and, and has associated help text or whatever. Yes. So please, Trevor, that you raise your hand. Trevor? Hey, yeah, I, I think okay. this, um, I guess one of the things that I'm interested in a lot, and this ties into you know looking at different methods or doing these various parameter sweeps, um, but I think that's something that I would like to see is sort of sharing of how uh, essentially just everybody's experience of how changing things, like how does that affect the results? You know, if you use GATK for variant calling versus deep variant for variant calling, just even these major decisions like that, I think it's something that end users, we spend a lot of time tweaking and seeing, okay, if I change this parameter, what happens to my results? If I use this argument versus that argument, how does it affect um, runtime or, or um, resource usage? Um, and I think that that's something that just sort of as a general bioinformatics community, I don't think we do a great job of detailing those things. Uh, a lot of times you'll see it in, uh, you know, there might be benchmarking papers when somebody releases a new method um, and you, I think, just kind of have to hope that you can extrapolate from whatever's found in those papers to your own data. But I think that um, having an interest group to sort of share the the insight and the experiences that we all have could be extremely useful for, you know, running down or turning down, you know, useless computations when we could sort of already know what happens when you use GATK versus deep variant, just to run with that example again. Yes, I, I agree. And who, who was going to talk? Someone was going to say something. So I was just going to 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 plus this. I mean, this is my, my impression is that this kind of discussion Trevor mentioned should be the real heart, no, of the channel. It, it, it is a very important discussion that should take place in the channel because where else can you ask this kind of question if not to people who are doing the same kind of analysis you are doing? And so, is it uh, how how should it work? Should it be like thread and there will be one thread dedicated to a specific question for instance or is it something because otherwise it can get very very messy rapidly so i guess this could be 
sort of self-organizing threats that, that gradually add up? Well, how do you see it? Yeah, I guess uh, I'm I'm not sure I have a great answer. I'm just <laughs> I have a question and and no solution for it. Uh, one one of the things I was wondering is there's a couple of ways I see that coming up. One is through regular meetings and and note taking. Um, you know, if if a regular meeting is happening, people um, such as yourself could submit questions like that to kind of, and then everyone discuss it. Then hopefully take some notes during that meeting so to record those kind of discussions for prosperity and and or have the the recording online though written written notes are always a bit more accessible um and the other thing is just making use of the slack community that we have just to pop in and ask a question but have the audience at your fingertips of you know a global community of people working with the same technology and the same data type in one place Can sorry so you, you had your hand yeah, up and i yeah. spoke over you <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I was uh, uh, yeah about parameters. I think there there are two things. Uh, the the it's always nice to have a reference point, of course, with the uh, configuration files that are proposed by people, and you could get them from publications and or in in that centralized uh, part. That that is a uh, quite an interesting uh, idea, I think. <clears throat> because it's always better to to look what uh, the others have tried and if it works maybe you can start by, by that but um I, I think Cedric that uh, we have the feeling that the it's not only the, the method pe people that that are interested in playing with parameters because end users they are they have to and with, <laughs> with combination of tools as well oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you know you you always eventually you end up looking okay, but I don't get my gene or maybe these ones I'm not sure if they are really overexpressed or whatever. So maybe uh, this is low, this has a low expression value. Maybe I could raise a bit the threshold or whatever. And we all do that. Not only if we are interested in methods. So th this is a critical thing. And so yeah, the more the more reference points, the better it is. And and I think he, maybe this is not. Uh, I'm I'm wondering if the the main factor that that is impacting the parameters is uh, like the species or more maybe the technology and sometimes like the kit, uh, the enzyme that was the protocol, the the, the experimental protocol that was used, and this has uh, by uh, by you know uh, experience shows that it has a huge impact on. How you're supposed to analyze your data, and in in that in that regard, the, the to have a lot of parameter files, the, if they are properly documented, which is uh, like another challenge for you, uh, could be of uh, uh, could be very useful. And uh, and and then I have a comment about the the questions and the the, the channel and so on. Um, I'm wondering how, and this is a question for you guys, the, how you, you see the, the articulation with the existing uh, channels for the, the dedicated uh, pipelines. Because if someone has a question about RNA-seq, uh, wouldn't they ask it uh, more on the RNA-seq channel than on the uh, interest? Uh, yeah, so... Yeah. Absolutely, and and that, uh, something I kind of touched upon in reference in the blog post, but it's a bit of a concern of mine is that the new interest groups kind of pull discussion out of the wider channels, which would be a, a potential negative consequence. Um, so uh, my hope is that um, that basically there'll be some kind of um, self organization about you know if a discussion thread is is clearly technical nature and not specific to animal genomics. That is specific to the RNA seq pipeline, then absolutely th that discussion should stop in that channel and, and switch over to RNA seq. But there's nothing that I can or should do to actually enforce that. It's just going to be up to you to, to decide that. I wouldn't be so concerned. I, I, I think I, I, the other way around, the discussion would start in the specific channel, and there won't be any discussion at all starting in the discussion group. You know, uh, the, but you, you know, but you know, Sylvain, I think uh, so. It's a very, very important and critical point. Because if the discussions do not take place at the right place, that generates chaos. And so I think, and that is touching on the last items of this discussion, because I see the audience is dwindling and, and we'd like to finish on this. But uh, um, 
we need to organize this channel. We need to have some good practices and we need to agree among ourselves uh, and to rapidly identify if a discussion is not taking place at the right place and then it will have to be moved in another place. And it, it, it's important because this will make things effective. Most of the members of this channel will also be following other pipeline channels because they will be following the pipeline channels in which they are interested. And we have to try to make sure that the discussion in this channel are about uh, a homogeneity of analysis across animals, across model systems. We have to, to, to make sure that this is all about interoperability, all about decreasing the level of fragmentation. Anything that has to do with a specific use of a tool is probably something that will take place in, in, in different channels. Uh, um, and and so that's a question, you know, I was hoping I, we had uh, flag Sven on this, but uh, we should probably draft a code of good practice for the channel, a code of indication of the kind of questions we think belong to the channel and the question that belong to other types of channel. And that, that, that that's something, if you guys agree, maybe we will share a Google Doc at some point and we can we can sort of prioritize the question and that was me trying to say before you know a typical question is i am doing this kind of analysis on that animal what kind of tools are you using you know, this kind of thing and if we could gradually come up with a list of questions with a list of uh, persona question if you want i think it could be useful okay yes so and then maybe we should this is related somehow to this uh, and the shape of the group what should be the regular activities of of the group so, for instance, you think that we should host seminars or regular roundtables? Uh, should we make like, I don't know, a series of seminar or just intercalate one with the other? I don't know, maybe this is a question for, for Cedric or well, for anyone that wants to jump in. So I, I can start on the seminar. So I, 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 I can tell you guys what was my vision, which is a little bit biased, of course. It was to, because of the environment in which I work at the CRG, it was to bring to this group state of the art of what is going on in human genetics. And, and uh, so, for instance, we're going to try to have Rodri Guigo representing ENCODE and GTEx talking very soon. We're going to have to try to have Thomas Marquez, who was leading the primate pan genome. We're going to have, try to have this kind of people because I think they will provide an inspiration to this channel. But of course, we would also like to have uh, people from your community. And that brings an important issue which we, on which I'd like to finish. That's especially for Krista. Sorry for singling you out, Krista and Silva. But you are the, the, the animal people I know best now on, the, on, this, on this call. And uh, uh, we represent a little bit of NextFlow, a little bit of NFCore and a very tiny little bit of the animal community because we've been interacting with you guys, but we don't re really have, you know, we are not really legitimate as a, as a representative of the animal community. And so I think it will be very important that the interest group is run jointly with, with people who carry more weight than we do in the animal community. And so we should have, it does not have to be formal eh, from the start. Uh, it, it can if you guys want, but I think it will be important to identify the core a uh, uh, board for the for, for for the channel that will administer the channel and that will propose speakers and propose themes and then and and do a joint. We are happy to take care of all the logistics and all that stuff. And then Phil and NFCore are providing us a great support. And then we're going to have even more of this. But I think it will be great to have uh, to have some of you guys involved. And so Krista, I know you must be extremely busy now with your with your new attribution. But but if you have someone or if you can propose someone who you think could be, uh, 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 I think uh, 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 Rosalind is a, uh, is a little bit underrepresented today, but I know they are interested in, uh, and I'm sure we can uh, we could motivate Emily or 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 or, or, or Dan McQueen and, and these people. Uh, Phil, sorry. Yeah, and I just wanted to sort of extend on that and maybe pick on someone else in this meeting, um, being very biased and and completely picking on on accents but i wonder trevor um i guess from your accent that you're not part of the european um collaboration <laughs> and so the a am i correct in that assumption 
Yes, yeah, I'm in uh, the United States. So like that's something else I would really love to see is we want NF Core to be as inclusive and global as possible. So I'd love any insight from, from you and because because this interest group is starting off from a European centric um, uh, consortia, like how how do we reach other other US based consortia that we can tap into? Um, how do we increase the reach the network effect? Yeah, that's a difficult question. Um, I think for one, because I don't necessarily have my, um, I'm not too deep in the animal science pool here. I was a molecular biologist and then just sort of started working in animal science on the bioinformatics side. Um, so I'm not too up to date with all the um, consortia that are present over here. I think it, it's maybe more fragmented um, and it's maybe just sort of appealing to people in individual groups. Um, animal science here, they tend to be very friendly in person and a lot of them know each other personally. So I think just sort of word of mouth is maybe the best way to get this going here in America. So, so we have contact with Chris Tuckle and and uh, and, and uh, James Rissi, and they couldn't make it today because there seemed to be an event taking place in the U.S. these days. But we hope that we will be able to engage them, and that's something probably Krista you have more to say than me on this. Yeah, you already mentioned uh, Jim Risi and Chris Tagel. Uh, Chris Elzig was today on the call. She's also very much. She she could be a, some kind of a connecting person because she also has a lot of links to the human side and she's very much interested in providing um, resources for, for the community. So even though she's maybe not one of the core users because she's more into databases than into data analysis herself, but she could also be somebody. And then there is, um, I think in the US, they also have a kind of a fan <coughs> bioinformatics group from, from some funded projects. Uh, I just don't call them. She's from, uh, it's, the name is out of my head, but she's, she's, um, she's also very much into bringing the bioinformatics community to, together. Um, I, I, I would pick up the name for her. It would be nice to also to contact her. And it's a fact that the reason we are now having this meeting at 4 p.m. is actually to be more inclusive with, with our U.S. colleagues. So that I don't know what time it's for you, Trevor. Not too early in the morning, I hope. But uh, uh, um, so uh, so yes, this is something very important. It's very important that that the group expands toward toward the U.S. And, and that's one of the things we'll be uh, we'll be trying to achieve. I think uh, well, yes. we've been on the call for about one hour and a half now. Jose, do you want yes. to? No, yes, this is what I wanted to say, that maybe we have to wrap up no, and finish the call because people may have to move on. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead, Sergi. No, I said we, we are still, we are still uh, uh, figuring out the speaker for uh, next session that will take place again on the third Wednesday of the week. And then we have, uh, we will communicate with you. We already have a speaker lined up till uh, July, uh, we will take a break after the third Wednesday of July, and we will resume on the third uh, Wednesday of September. And, uh, um, and and we'll keep you updated through through the Slack channel. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And <laughs> I really want to thank all of you. We've been a bit long and the audience has decreased a little bit, but this was, we started with a pretty nice audience for, for, for your talk, Krista. So I think this was, a pretty nice success for for launching and uh, thank you all for being here for joining this uh, round table and uh, this has been terrific so see you all a month from now now uh, see you and thanks see you so much. Thanks, you Jose. thanks thanks you all